Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do a fun kind of wintry mix mandala. And I'm going to be doing it on this lovely stone that I made using the Happy Dotting Company mold. It's about three inches in size. And all I did was use Ultra Cal or gypsum to make these. So the first center dot, somebody sent me these crystal rods a while ago. We're going to try it. I used some dotting tools today. So we're going to start off with some white. And we're going to use the crystal dotting rod to make a large center dot. Thankfully, Angela over at Happy Dotting thought to put a little dot there in the middle for us. So we already know where our center starting point is here. And the thing with these dotting tools is you have to make sure you roll it all the way around or you're going to get a different shape other than a circle. So when you get the paint up under it, then roll it all the way around there. That's a little bit better of a circle. I'm also going to use mostly the dotting styluses today to create this mandala. And the first one I have is just a small end. I angled them myself. I just bent them. And then we're going to continue on with the white. So we're going to do above and below, just like that. And sometimes if you want a different amount and you're using it for your symmetry, I do the whole plus sign. But right now we're going to do it on the 45 degree angles because we just want the mandala to have six points. So if you do the plus sign, you'll end up with the eight point mandala. But this way, it just starts us off with our symmetry for the six points. And I'm just using the DecoArt Americana paints. This is titanium white. And then the green dotting stylus is just a little bit larger than the yellow one. So just going up in size above the dots that we put down the first round. So we're kind of creating spokes like a wheel around the stone. If you're new to my channel, I really like to use the deco art paints because for dotting they're just fantastic almost all the time right out of the bottle so if you're looking for great paints the deco art is the way to go I feel you don't have to mix anything in you get the right consistency which is really important when you're making dots and these dotting tools I actually sell in my Etsy shop the angled ones but you can find straight ones anywhere online basically I just find it easier to see where I'm placing the dots with the angle. So there you can see our spokes are developing here. I'm just going up in size each time as I go around a little bit more paint and a larger dot. And don't lose heart if you're just beginning. You'll start to get a feel for the size of the dots that you will get and how much paint goes on the tool each time. So don't give up. It's lots of fun. Very therapeutic. And there's so many designs that you can do. So many colors. Just have fun with it. We'll go around again. I'm still using the titanium white. Which I think is also called snow white in this line. I think I'm going to stop there with five dots out each spoke. So this is a, my etcher. It's I broke the end off of one of the ball styluses. So it's very, very tiny point, but you can use toothpicks or other items. And I'm just going to show you quick how to do a little swipe element on the end here. 
etcher, it doesn't allow for a lot of paint to be on it, so it, you can do the smaller, daintier swipes like this. It's just kind of a, a fringy swipe element here. Kind of like a snowflake it would be. It could be snowflakes for winter. Or just a fun, fun, whimsical mandala. We'll do the same at the end of each of the spokes that we created here. And these you can take your time with if you don't feel like you're getting an accurate, you know, if you feel like you get wobbly, if you go too fast and you wipe out somewhere else, just make it too long but too short. You know, if you use the same size tool each time, they should be pretty consistent. But there are also plenty of companies out there that have stencils that you can draw guidelines that could help you measure guidelines out. But I'm just kind of winging it because I kind of like the free flow feel of art. I didn't have enough paint on it that time. But you know, you can kind of have the free flow feel. And you know it's handmade. From your heart. Plus it, with all nowadays, you know, the machines can make anything. So this kind of gives it that personal touch. And we're not machines. It's just meant to be enjoyable. So again, it's still the etcher. It's just a small tool. Toothpick. I've used a mechanical pencil before I've shown you guys. I think on the pendants that you can use a mechanical pencil, the lead on it. Just anything small, pointy that you have around the house. Skewers. I've seen people do it with skewers that you do for kebabs. That works too. And most of the items I use in my videos, I'll put description in the link or links in the description for y'all. So a lot of people ask me about the Lazy Susan, the turntable on the bottom. I'll put the link for that and some paints and the tools and where you can find the molds to make these awesome little handmade stones. If you can't find natural stones, it's really a great alternative. Plus it's a consistent size. If you're practicing for your symmetry, it really helps with your symmetrical sizing. All right, so now I'm going to use the Extreme Sheen Aquamarine. These metallics are amazing. They're super vibrant. So I'm going to grab another one of the crystal rods, which is an X size down from the larger rod that we used. And this one's about, I would say, maybe it's about just over a quarter of an inch. And we'll put a nice dot in the middle there. All right, Gail. My lovely friend Gail taught me a little trick here. She uses her husband's screwdrivers, the flat heads, to make that lovely, lovely petal element that I showed you guys recently with a flat brush. I think it was in the large oval stone video. Um, I showed you how to make these petal elements using a flat brush, but this is a flat head screwdriver. So you can dip it and dot it and you get consistent petals every time. It took a little bit of practice. I didn't do so hot the first time I tried it, but you also have to make sure your paint consistency is what we need for dotting. It's a little bit thinner. 
but you can see each time you get a consistent size I'm just dipping it right in the deep well of my palette and tossing it on there with the flathead screwdriver so thank you so much Gail shout out for those that little hack and almost everyone has a screwdriver if not you can go to your dollar store too dollar store has them flathead screwdrivers just get a couple different sizes and you'll be ready to go I'm just gonna go down the side here from the top back with my etcher. We'll do some little dots from the top to our petals. And as I do these designs, you can really see where you could branch off to spirals. You could do a ton of other designs with this other than the one that I'm doing. So mandala mandalas are really versatile. It's just a fun pattern type painting with dots. If you're interested in more of the videos, you can always hit the bell and subscribe to my videos and you'll be able to get notifications for whenever I put out a new one. But you can see, you see the spiral already if we just left it like this. But I'm gonna go down both sides on mine. So we're gonna end up kind of with our star shape, flower. Just so the symmetry is the same on all the sides for my mandala today. And this is just the white again. So even multiple colors, just doing one color, one or two or three colors like this mandala is going to be, they can be really delicate and beautiful and very intricate. It looks like a flower now, <laughs> but you can use this for a snowflake or I'm just calling it our wintry mandala today, but you can see where you can definitely go into many other directions with this type of design. So I'm going back with the aquamarine now and I'm going to swipe from our petal up to the top of our spoke on each side. I'll do them alternating for now, but we'll do it on each side eventually here. And for the swipes, I'm really just taking my time. I'm using a small dotting tool. And the paint as you pull it will start to run out off the tool to give you a smaller tail at the end each time, just like that. So I also have videos where I do this with paint brushes if you're interested, but these dotting tools are pretty, pretty good and consistent for making the swipes. It's also a little bit less frustrating, I find, if you're just starting out. So this is the aquamarine still, that nice shiny metallic. And we're just starting at our top of our petal and pulling it to the top of our spoke along the white dots that we created down. So they're kind of a makeshift guideline for your mandala.
Let's do a couple dots at the base here of each of our petals and spokes. And this is still the aquamarine. Just kind of filling in the negative space that we have here on our mandala. These extreme sheens do have a little bit of um, thickness, the tackiness to them. So just make sure as you pull your dotting tool up, if you have a little bit of a paint string, don't let it flap over. Just let it release before you move over to another area. I'm going to go back to our handy dandy flathead screwdriver again with the white. And let's put a few more petals out here. These are so fun. This is one of the things that I think makes this community so fantastic is sharing ideas with one another of what works and other things that people can try. You know, some people get frustrated with brushes. There's tons of tools out there. Some people don't want to use tools so they can try the brushes or screwdrivers for pedals or mechanical pencils or toothpicks. I mean, I think I saw the other day somebody's using popsicle sticks or ends of erasers. There's so many things you can dip in paint <laughs> to use to make your designs. So now I have turquoise waters. This one is a multi-surface, but really it's just a light blue. So if you don't have these exact colors, you can still create this design. It's just a lighter blue. And we'll do a small dot on either side of the petals that we just put down. I'm going to go back to the white just to kind of, for lack of a better term, beef up the sides here. So I'm going to start at the top of our petal and just go a couple down to the blue dots that we just put down and then start at the top again and work our way down the sides each time. And as you work your way down the sides, your dots will get smaller because you'll have less and less paint on the tool each time. See how they're getting smaller? So it does it automatically. You don't have to switch tools. You just let the paint run out as you work your way around. I'm on the fourth row now of white. I think I can probably fit a fifth row after this one. We'll just tuck it in here and then let the dots walk around the side, getting smaller. And we'll do this around each of our petals, five rows of the white, using the smallest dotting tool. How are you guys doing? Are you enjoying this design? I think it's a fun wintry one. I love to hear your feedback on things as always, so feel free to hop in the comments. Say hi. Say where you're from. I'm in Ohio, USA. I always wonder where everybody's watching from. YouTube only gives me countries here and there, but... I've seen people who have tuned in from Istanbul and Chile and all over the world. So it's pretty awesome that we have such a large art community and it's all over the world, you guys. It's fantastic. So please feel free to comment, say hi. I try to use the Google Translate whenever possible as well. So we'll work with that as we go if we need to communicate on there.
Like I said, this art community is fantastic. We're also, you can find me on Instagram, say hi over there. That's more of just kind of an art gallery of items that I've working on, progress pictures, really sped up time-lapse videos, or I'm on Facebook as well. But if you're looking to get into this, feel free, like I said, subscribe to the videos. There's a lot of other daughters out there who have different styles who you should definitely check out. Or even Googling things like pointillism. Um, nowadays, everyone's calling it dot art, which you'll find a lot of as well, but there's just so many things you can do with this art form, paint, and it's very relaxing and therapeutic quite often. I try to paint every day just a little bit to have some time to myself, but also just to kind of wind down. You can see even with just the simple couple of blues and the whites, how lovely this is turning out. I think white looks so delicate, but it really contrasts on the black background that we have too. You can see too how you just kind of get in the zone of your painting. Have some time to relax. Maybe with a cup of coffee. Or maybe with a glass of wine. Plus it's like, kind of like a good book, you know, when you're reading something and, but you can still put it down and come back to it at another point in time. It's just one of the benefits of painting, I think, too.
Okay, we're almost done. We're just finishing up the last of this element here. Our fifth row, we'll go up to five rows. I think a design like this too is great when you're starting out just because you can repeat the same steps over and over here, which gives you a lot of practice. You get into a rhythm. And there you have a lovely, lovely, delicate mandala. And we're going to add to this one a little more here, but you could even leave it at this if you were happy with the minimal, minimalist look here. But I'm going to go back with the aquamarine here now and go down one side of each of our white elements here. You can see I'm just working my way down the side, but see that little string that's pulling up? That's what you don't want to drop over onto your piece. So if are you are using the extreme sheen, that is just a heads up with that. Now I'm just using the light blue to go down the other side here. That way I'm just kind of incorporating multiple colors, just a personal preference, but you don't have to do that. Plus I tend to like to do things every now and then that are asymmetrical. Even if just something as simple as two different tones, two different colors, sometimes two different lengths, but it's just fun to change up your designs a bit.
We'll just grab our white here. I'm just going to start a little row down to the first of our spoke that we started. So it's kind of like an inner spiral effect, but I'll actually do the other side too, just to even out our symmetry so it'll look more like the inner star, inner spiral, or inner star, yeah, inner flower of the mandala. See, it's starting down the other side now. It kind of gives us that star effect. I'm just trying to think on if I want to kind of fill in the spots a little more. So we're going to do some swipes on the internal side of our other swipes, but it's going to go the opposite direction. So we're starting at the top dot of our spoke and then pulling the light blue down towards the white dots that we just put down for our inner star. We'll do that on either side all the way around. And just take your time and I waited until these the outer metallic swipes were definitely dry so there's no bleeding from one paint color into the other All right, now I'm going to use this tropical blue, which is a little bit darker. Just needed a little something that, to contrast the, how many light colors we have. And we're going to go with one of our dotting styluses and just put a dot at the top of each of our petals that we made with the flathead screwdriver. And it kind of delineates where the petals are and gives a little bit of contrast to your colors here. But you can see I only use blue and whites for this lovely little mandala. Our little winter wonderland guy here. And I'll, like I said, put all the links to the items that I used in the bottom here for the description. 
And please feel free to comment, contact me, say hi. We're all in this together, enjoying the art community, which I hope you guys are being an active part of. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Have a great day. Happy painting.